Well, I've got my old outfeed and uh, assembly table sitting here with just the top. I'm using it as a template so that I can lay out for my router uh, opening and my holes for my anchor fence. I've got it set at uh, 8 inches from the front to the center for the router plate which is the way I had it before and it works great. I got a jigsaw out the majority of the material and then I'm going to take a pattern bit follow along with the bearing through here through multiple cuts until I get it complete and then I can use my Craig levelers to hold the router plate up. When you want to cut out a space like this I think that cutting close to the final size is a good idea and then using a a router bit like this pattern cutter to smooth it all to the finished size. I'm going to use a jigsaw over here and I'm just going to connect these holes all the way around and use the router to finish it up. After you get done using your jigsaw, then you're going to come back with your template bit and finish off this little bit of uh, material that's left. And I stayed a, about a quarter inch away on most of it because I really didn't want to chip the laminate. I want to keep it clean and I know the router bit's going to do that. So I'm just going to take my template bit and follow along my opening here and then I'll get an exact duplicate. On my first pass I took about three-eighths of an inch of material off that left me with another three-eighths to go. You don't want to really try and hog everything out at once. Now it'll be much easier to follow uh, and remove the rest of the material but you can see I've got a nice smooth template all the way around and once I make the next circle I'll have a finished hole. Well our next step to get our router plate all mounted is we want to use these Craig levelers. You can get these online. Uh, these just came with my Craig table and I put just some levelers in my Craig table. So these were left over so I, I used them over here. Um, all it is is there's three screws that go into the bottom like that and then this half crest just matches up to the corner and then you've got four corners total so you'll have four levelers all the way around and you just mount them in with the Craig screws one of the things you want to make sure of though is whatever Craig screw you use that it won't come all the way through from the bottom up so inch and a quarter screws were too much for my table so I had to go down to one inch screws for this one so once you get your levelers in all you want to do is basically level everything and part of how you do that is you really do need to put these corner screws in and kind of just snug them and that way you can kind of get the the full result and then what I like to do is barely ease over the edge all the way around with a piece of sandpaper just soften that corner that way everything slides real nice um, you know you don't get any hang-ups when you're feeding materials I'm pushing down pretty hard and I'm not getting any any catching anywhere and that's what we want we we'll to be able to roll our material any which direction we like on this router table and everything will be fine. And then when the bit's retracted, I've still got full use of the table. Another big plus to a laminate and this phenolic insert, glue doesn't stick to it. So if I'm assembling something, I don't need to lay paper down or anything. As soon as the glue starts to dry, it'll just flake right off. So, and then I also like to wax everything, so that really helps. Well, I got the frame all assembled, placed for my hinges, and once you do that, you just want to um, make a rabbit, and I just used the rabbiting bit on the router to do that. And whatever depth for your panel or piece of plexiglass, which is I'm using, you, and then this, of course, wasn't wide enough, so I had to make a small piece and super glue them together so once you do that just set all that in there like this and makes a nice little glass area you can see into your router compartment. Alright I went ahead and I've installed the door 
I used uh, some European concealed hinges that uh, I got off a kitchen cabinet door and this seems to work really well swings away completely so I can get to the router and make fast adjustments if I want and with it having the plexiglass door I can see what's going on with the router makes it really nice uh, I left a little bit of a gap at the top to kind of create some airflow I'll see how that goes if that doesn't work then I could always drill a few holes in the door frame to create more of a vacuum I'll see how that goes but I'm really happy how this turned out one of the great advantages of the Incra system is how quickly you can put these on and off if you do it the way I'm doing it with this uh, bolt system so you just slide your bracket on tighten up your bolt heads all four of them you don't have to make it super tight that's what 30 seconds tops there and I was talking while I did it and this thing is part of the table now and then you just slide your the rest of your fence on and you're ready to route this is a great feature of the Incra system is you can take this bracket on and off within 30 seconds and back to using it as a table saw out feed table 30 seconds later your back is a router table so it's a big advantage to the Incra system is being able to put it on and off and know that with this reference on the back you're exactly where you need to be every time once you got your base mounted you can take and slide your Incra assembly all the way in and I tell you this thing is solid it's not going anywhere and the great thing is I've got all the mechanical advantage that Incra provides with their uh, screw system and when I don't need it I can just take it off and keep using it as an outfeed table but the great thing is with such a long feed range I can uh, I've got a great amount of outfeed where most router tables you don't have that much the camera I just went ahead and used the uh, scrap of plywood here to make another door um, that'll help hide the compressor this is uh, actually a piece of plywood that was the top for the old outfeed table. I just cut it down and used it. Um, just trying to use up material, you know. Uh, I also put in a, I had a lot of space above the compressor, so I thought I'll just put in another drawer. This drawer just rides on runners, so it's really more like a tray as much as it is a drawer. So once you get that, and you can pull it out pretty far, get all the way to the back and uh, so th that's a nice little little added addition to this compartment and with the door closed keeps the dust out and also helps keep the noise down on the compressor three two one all right so i think we're going to wrap up this series on the alfie table slash assembly table slash router table what we're going to do is over maybe in a a follow-up video later on I'll add a part four to show some of the other little things that I've done to it but for now this thing is ready to go I'm gonna put it to work in the shop we've got this huge surface now where I can assemble things catch larger sheet goods coming off the table over here my vacuum uh, shop vac and my vortex dust right is hidden out of the way it's not in the foot traffic anymore but yet I can reach down there and grab it and use it um, got our drawers now we got a lot more storage in the same space where before I had zero now we've got our router table all finished up on top here got my anchor fence mounted um, I can see my Triton down there if I got something going on I can see it better more storage down there with some shelves I haven't even used yet I've got an open cavity here I haven't decided what to do with it yet I've got my nail guns here so then we've got our air compressor on the back side here with some more storage I've still got to run a vacuum line inside the cabinet but I'll follow that up in a later video but I think we're gonna call this one finished I really appreciate you watching the video series I hope you learned something out of it uh, total cost for this thing is probably uh, less than $20 in screws and a couple um, shelf brackets that I already had, but I did pay for those. 
Everything else is scrap from the, you know, from the garbage. So this just goes to show you what you can end up with if you just have a little bit of patience to gather the materials and then uh, decide what you want to build and build it. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button if you would. If you want to email me about anything you've seen or leave a comment, that'd be great. Uh, emails backyardwoodshop at gmail.com. And until next time, I'll see you in the backyard.